Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be working on a small book. So when I woke up this morning, I was like, you know, I think I know what I want to do. Who knows if that's what I'll end up doing. I just want to let you see that I used a quilting magazine for this. And you can see here the quilts. The colors and the textures were amazing. And as I ripped them apart, it was so exciting for me. Then I, uh, you know, glued them all down. And here you can see the strips before I laid them all down. And I whitewashed them. I used white paint. Here you can see the complete sheet before I cut it up. I kind of wish I used gesso because gesso gives it a really rough texture. Well, not really rough, but a little rough so that you can really um, build the texture. But what I'm gonna do with this, I believe, is that I'm gonna make this into a little book and I'm going to make this into a kind of, uh, book for just collecting things along the way that mean something to me. <laughs> you know, like a scrapbook. So I've collected some pages from uh, different books. This one's from KOA Catalog, State of Florida. This is from a children's, let me reach over here. This is from a children's dictionary. I got for a quarter, a quarter. Look at this thing. How fun is that, right? In the front it has, um, Welcome to your dictionary. Isn't that cute? And the use of your dictionary and how words are used and building of language. Really interesting and cuteness, cuteness, cuteness. So I've used a page of this that has uh, seashells, seaweed, I don't know, just kind of things that go along with the ocean. Thought that'd be cute. And then some papers that I brought along. These are copy stained, just pieces of regular uh, paper from my printer. And this is interesting. I had laid them all out on a table as I dipped them into the coffee stain that I made from coffee. And as I laid them on top of each other, this transferred from a library card that I, trying to reach over here, I did manage to bring a few things from home. This is a library card and I got a box of these for a quarter. I mean, a huge box at a, at a yard sale. And it laid on here and transferred, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna use that. And then this is just a piece of tracing paper. You know how I love the sound of texture. That's tea stain, and then, I mean coffee stain, and then another piece of coffee stain paper. So I have those precious things that I'm gonna use those in it and build on that. So it's something else I'll be able to share with you as I travel. I sped this up because I wanna to talk to you while I'm doing it and kind of explain the process that if I left it, um, <laughs> This is sped up four times. If I had left it at regular speed, I'd be here all day explaining to you and you'd probably fall asleep. <laughs> I also used a paper bag that my husband brought home. I mentioned it in another video um, that everything he, that comes into the RV is fair game for me. So when I saw that bag, I folded it up and put it away and here I'm using it to add pages to my little scrapbook. I'm measuring um, because I want my pages to be about a quarter of an inch shorter um, both ways, lengthwise and um, widthwise, so that my cover kind of overlaps a little bit. This is a really simple, simple, simple little book. Nothing fancy. This is the only measuring that I had to do was the length and the width. There are no holes that you punch. There is no, um, there is no, um, Oh, what is it called? <laughs> you know, there's no um, spine. It's spineless. It's a spineless book. There's no spine. So it's really super easy. I just stapled it together. I just wanted to make something fun and something fast today. Something so that I could feel like I really accomplished something after not accomplishing anything yesterday. I tried and nothing I tried to make turned out very well. The only thing that I made that was of any use is this sheet of decollage. And you can see that it's already been cut up when I started and that's because I used it to try to make a couple of little things that I ended up just ripping up and destroying. I was going to try to save them but the more I ripped the more it was useless. I try not to throw anything away because you just never know when it could be useful in another project. Murphy's Law, you know, if you, if you throw it out, you're going to need it, right? If something can go wrong, it will. So here we go. I'm cutting the bag to fit 
the pages. It's just a little paper bag and it's wrinkly, but I don't care. And I wanted to save the top part there where it shows that it's a paper bag, just to add a little interest to my book. The, the um, bag, as small as it was, was quite large compared to my little book. So I cut away most of it. I don't like to measure. I like to eyeball stuff. And so I measured like one way and then I'd eyeball the other direction. But something interesting that I discovered, and you might notice the ruler that I'm using, it's a Tim Holtz ruler, where on one side of it, you can turn it so that it has the zero in the middle, and you can uh, measure things from the middle out in both directions. What I never noticed about it, though, was that one edge of the ruler actually has it embedded in it a piece of metal, like a little, uh, a little tiny rod of stainless steel, or something like that inside the edge. One edge is beveled and the other edge has this piece of metal. So that everywhere that it says that I need to have a metal ruler, you know, because you're going to you're going to run a blade along the edge. And if you use a plastic or a wood ruler, you're inevitably going to carve out a piece out of that ruler. This one has the metal. I was so impressed. I've had this ruler for years. And when I looked at it and I thought, gosh, here I am in my RV and I actually brought the right ruler because it is also a metal ruler, and yet it's not heavy like a metal ruler. And, you know, like I've said before, things in the RV, you really need to try to keep the weight down. So, here we are. I've got all my sheets of paper piled up, and I am using the IKEA plastic mat that I have in my RV. And I told George this morning, I really think that I need to go back to Dollar Tree. I noticed that they had a small uh, cutting mat, really small, really small, like probably eight by six or eight by six by 10 or something like that. And it would be perfect for in here. I try not to pick up too many things, but a dollar twenty-five, I think I can handle that. Here you can see some ice cream cone pages that I painstakingly tried to cut so that I would get the most use out of the ice cream cones. It's from a Lancaster um, like newsletter kind of uh, pamphlet about Lancaster, but it's like a newsprint, and uh, it's in color. So I liked that. I wanted to have a little taste, <laughs> no pun intended. Well, yeah, I guess it is kind of intended. Um, ice cream. Um, I, I still haven't gotten any ice creams in this trip, but there are so many ice cream places around this area that, you know, you have to have at least ice cream at least one time. So here I'm flipping through. I had stapled the edge of my book from the outside, and I realized that maybe my book won't lay as flat as I'd like. But then I did this, and it's not a really thick book, so it's okay. But I can see the staples, so I'm thinking I want to cover them. I tried using this leftover piece of my um, decollage, but it wasn't wide enough. So I ended up using some washi tape. I brought, I think, four rolls of washi tape with me, different sizes, different patterns. This one is very narrow. Um, actually, it's no, it isn't narrow. This is a wide one, but it wasn't wide enough. So I decided to take two strips of the one I liked better, which was a little bit less wide or <laughs> a little narrower, and use two pieces of that over the wider piece. So it ended. I ended up with the look that I wanted. So there's that little book. And now I have my other little piece that I want to make into a book. And I'm even using the leftovers that I trimmed off the bigger book. But I want to take one of them out because uh, the page that had the ice cream cones, what's left of it isn't very pretty. It isn't It's just a lot of weird edges of ads and nothing spectacular so I took that out but instead I added a uh, a coffee stained um, library index card it has a hole through the bottom of it so because it used to be in a library um, catalog it's a catalog card but it's blank but I, I did coffee stain it so I put that in instead and this time I wanted to staple down the middle, but um, my staple is not deep enough. At home, I have one that is, but I didn't bring that one. So what I did was I just stapled it where the ends of the staple went 
kind of into my board and then I used my scissors to fold them over. So it is actually stapled down the middle of the book. So the book will lay flat and now I want to cover those up. So this time I used a piece, that, a piece of that narrow leftover decollage and some glue and glued that right down the center of the back. You'll see here my glue bottle got clogged and I had to pop out the top and take a little sewing needle out of this little tiny vintage uh, sewing kit. It's from a hotel from years ago. I got it in some yard, uh, some, some uh, thrift store for 10 cents. I think I got two or three of them. So, you know, it's a little handy thing to throw in in case we lose a button or we need a seam sewed. So I used that uh, to fix my glue bottle and it worked. So then I was able to use my glue bottle and put plenty of glue on that binding. Uh, what did I say that thing is called? It's uh, Spine. It's got a little tiny spine, not really but it looks really cute. It's so small. And I'm just so happy working on these, using this, this decollage that I created that I just love. And I have tried putting different things on the cover, and I just can't seem to find anything that I am happy with. Um, I don't want to cover up my beautiful decollage. I just love it so much. And that didn't work, and this doesn't work. And I just... I don't like anything I'm putting on there. Maybe sometime I will have something I'm happy with, but right now, I'm not. Here, I've decided I need to decorate the inside of the covers. So I'm using, I was going to try a patchwork kind of a Franken page kind of thing on the inside. Then I remembered I had these really old book pages from the 30s um, that are so, so brittle. You'll see when I tear this, I don't even have to use scissors or anything. It just tears apart really fast. And it's so brittle, I can't use it for a page. So I decided to use it to cover a page. It's uh, a piece that talks about perspective. It's from an art book. And uh, here it's talking about clouds. And I just thought it was so interesting. And as I'm attaching it, it ripped on me. It just, it's just like, almost crumbles it's so old so what I ended up doing was using some uh, gloss medium to cover it and glue it after the this is spray glue I almost forgot about this this is actually Elmer spray adhesive that goes on purple I found it in Dollar Tree and I thought well let me try it it worked pretty good I don't know if this was exactly the right kind of a project to use it on to try it but it worked enough and this poor paper, it was just so old. So I just decided after I did a little bit of trimming to use the gel medium to hold that page not only into the book, but hold it together. It was just crumbling. So here you're, you'll see I'm using more glue. I'm adding uh, a little tuck space with a piece of the leftover decollage that I made from the quilt magazines. And now I'm going to add the, I think this is where it is. No, I mean, a little bit more glue. <laughs> and now I will be adding the, uh, the here we go, that's gel uh, gloss medium. And it will um, add, act as a glue and a protectant for the, uh, the page. I le made sure I left the, um, under my hand on the left, I have that little tuck space. Made sure I didn't glue that down and also covered the other page so that they would both be glossy.